Hey gents, do you guys have any idea how much the Switch 2's T39, T239 chip is underclocked compared to the Tegra X1 in the original Switch? I'm curious about how far Nintendo dialed things back from the chip's full potential, especially since the X1 was already running way below its max clocks for heat and battery reasons. So yeah, that basically uh, the CPU was massively downclocked in Tegra X1 and the GPU uh, significantly so, especially in handheld form, obviously. Uh, so what's the situation with Switch 2? Well, actually we did a video and indeed an article on Eurogamer back in the day where we published um, the direct specifications from developer documentation. And um, lo and behold, that documentation included the theoretical maximums um, for the um, the CPU and the GPU. So with the CPU, we're on about uh, 1 gigahertz to 1100 megahertz. Um, mm -hmm. And the maximum there is 1.7 gigahertz, similar to what happened with yeah. uh, Tegra X1, funnily enough. And um, looking at the GPU, um, 1007 megahertz, 1 gigahertz docked. 561 megahertz mobile but again there's a there's a higher uh, threshold there 1.4 gigahertz so i guess from that perspective there might actually be the concept of switch 2 being slightly more being held back than the switch 1 equivalents um but Indeed. regardless those decisions were made for a reason and i guess it was battery and thermals um oliver anything to add so if we look at switch 2 actually there is a product out there that's also manufactured on a, a similar process note, not the same process note, obviously, but a similar process note, uh, eight nanometer product. That's Orin, the Orin line of, of products, Orin NX, Orin Nano, and Orin AG, AGX. And if you look at the CPU in Orin AGX in particular, because that's the most, I, I think the, the highest clocked of the Orin products, that is a Cortex A78 based CPU, and that operates at 2.2 gigahertz, right? right? So that's twice the Switch 2's maximum CPU clock. If you look at the GPU um, in Orin AGX, it's 1300 megahertz in the GPU. So in that product, they're basically configuring it at 1300 megahertz, the Switch 2 maximum is one gigahertz. If you go over to Switch 1, you have a much more direct comparator because you just have uh, a, a Tegra X1 being fed with mains power in the Nvidia Shield TV. <laughs> right. In that case, you're also looking at a, at a one gigahertz CPU in Switch 1 two gigahertz in shield. So again, that's exactly twice the uh, clock that's in the in the uh, portable product, it's in the, in the home product. And then on the GPU set of things, you're looking at about a 23% lower uh, GPU clock there. So I think if you look at that, maybe that's a little bit, I'll, maybe I'll put it in the table in the video for people to look at. I think when you actually look at the percentages, the relative percentages, they look very, very similar. I think um, with respect to the the decrease in in uh, in clocks on those two on those two chips versus the the maximums, Ampere itself often hits like 1600, 1700 megahertz in desktop products. There are a number of comparators that you could use here, but I think overall the like general trend is that both switches are probably about a similar margin underclocked from their other products on similar process nodes that are made by Nvidia. These similar pro products with similar architectures. Um, but I, I don't think, I don't think this is like a super interesting question because th these are, these are products that hit different product segments. And ultimately, like when you're looking at a CPU clock in a performance constrained device, even in a device like Orin AGX, which is very wide, I think, um, they aren't necessarily going to be hitting like the maximum clocks that you could conceivably hit with those, uh, with those chips, with those CPUs, with those GPUs. Yeah, I mean the switch. The switch two is what it is. Um, there is potential that the, you could access those additional clocks, but it would require obviously, well, an exploit first of all, and then a whole sort of ecosystem for running exploits and um, and homebrew code. So uh, it happened on switch one, but um, switch two seems to be. Uh, a bit more resilient to exploits, but it's certainly an interesting sort of uh, window into the tolerances of the chip and the potential performance in there. And also, I guess, although it's not going to happen, <laughs> if there is ever a die shrink, you, you know, there is the potential for actually running at higher clocks. It's just that if switch one is any kind of indicator, they'll just stick to the same clocks and pocket the extra battery life, which to be fair, in the case of switch two is probably the right call for, for sure. Not sure if you have anything to add there, John. Oh, I think the clocks are fine. I wish they'd put that extra battery to use and fix the screen. <laughs> yes. Do something with the, the, yeah. 
that gosh darn screen. Oh. Fair enough. <laughs>